Do you need manganese for your crops to achieve top yield? Well, of course you do, but how much? That's really the question. Well, here, here's the thing with all these nutrients, there's ways to measure it. You can find out how much is in your soil. You can find out how much is in your crop. The question is, where is that level that's going to make a difference for you? And how do you identify if manganese is a yield limiting factor on your farm? Okay, the first thing is with the soil test. A lot of times we're talking about 20 to 40 parts per million on a DTPA test. Uh, with a Malek test, maybe you're going to want a little bit higher level, but all I can tell you is you've got to get that manganese test done on your soil test. We find so often NPK, maybe soil pH, maybe a couple of other things. Some people will test zinc only. Um, manganese, it's super important. You need good manganese levels in your plant. What we found here over the last few years is number one, I think about standability in my crop. Yes, potassium's the, the most important nutrient, but manganese is number two. Second thing is, if you have better manganese levels in your plant, your plant has a little bit more tolerance to white mold, sclerotinia white mold. Well, that's a really big deal. So you've got to get good levels of manganese, yes, in the soil, but ultimately you've got to get them in the plant. We've heard from farmers across the country that said, you know, I started putting on this micronutrient blend and I saw better plant health and better stress tolerance. Yes, micronutrients are really important. A lot of the functions that are happening within your plant, Brian mentioned a specific disease that it appears when we've got higher levels of manganese, we have less of that disease present. I'd say that would be the case for a number of different diseases because we're improving plant health. Now, getting manganese into that crop that's where the challenge gets to be. You, there's a factor that we were talking about here just a minute ago. Brian said, well, we're seeing a lot of this and that on soil tests. One of those factors that I want to look at in addition to manganese is soil pH. On our own farm, we've seen a correlation when our pHs get up towards seven or even over seven. We have a really hard time to get manganese to show up on the soil tests. When our test levels on pH come down into the low sixes where we want them, low to mid sixes, all of a sudden we see manganese parts per million start rising up on those soil tests to match. Okay, so let's say you have high pH soil and you go, uh-oh, this could be a problem for me. I might apply manganese and I could go broadcast spread it. I can put manganese sulfate out. Yes, you can do that. Number one, it might not all be available in the first year, but two, it might get tied up in that high pH. So how am I going to counteract that? The first thing I would look at is putting some out with a planter. You can use a little bit in furrow, got to be careful there, otherwise two by two. But you can put a fair amount of manganese in a two by two and then you've got, a, you've got it fairly close to the plant, it's less likely to get tied up. You're much more likely to get those levels up in the plant and they should show up in your plant tissue analysis. Now, if you're seeing during the course of the growing season, your plant tissue analysis isn't good, you can foliar feed with manganese. Many different products include, many combinations include manganese. So if you would like to do that or even just run a straight manganese product, you absolutely can and apply some of that foliar. We've seen better luck with those foliar type applications with chelated manganese rather than something like manganese sulfate. So it's one of those things where you kind of get what you pay for. When you buy a little more expensive version of manganese, but it's chelated, now we're actually getting it into the crop. The other thing that we saw this year at the Ag PhD Field Day site, for example, where we needed some manganese in the crop, we had applications done multiple weeks in a row, but we didn't get any rain and we didn't get manganese into the crop. As soon as we got rain, boom, we got it in there. So you do need some moisture to get those types of things to work. One last thing I guess I would mention is with Roundup, a lot of people say, oh boy, we're affecting the manganese levels in the plant when we apply Roundup. Look, we haven't seen a change in manganese levels in the plant, even putting a hundred times worth of Roundup out there. So I'm not buying into that whole argument. What I am buying into is when we test soils all across the country and really all across North America, we're seeing tremendous amounts of manganese deficiency. There's a lot of manganese that gets pulled up by the plant every year. And if you haven't been applying manganese, it may be time to start doing it this coming year. Well, this fall, as you're doing your soil test program, make sure that you're measuring manganese and the other micronutrients in addition to soil pH, NP and K, and all those other good things. One other thing you want to watch for in your fields is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? <music>